HTC have announced the Touch Diamond, a finger touch device with a heavily revamped version of their TouchFlow user interface based on Windows Mobile 6.1. TouchFlow 3D is an animated interface to several of the major applications such as messaging, contacts and photos, although for many other applications you'll still drop down to the usual Windows Mobile screens. The Diamond has the usual comm specs including HSDPA, HSUPA, Wi-Fi, plus a full VGA display with auto rotation no less and a 3 megapixel autofocus camera. There's 4 gigabytes of flash memory and, of course, this is 2008, after all, a built-in GPS. Tasty! I'll have a review for you here in a couple of months. RAM have finally announced their BlackBerry 9000, nicknamed The Bold, which can be considered an upgrade on all fronts to their current 8000 range. Fitted out in stainless steel trim, there's a half VGA display, HSDPA data, a first in the BlackBerry world at least, a plus Wi-Fi and a GPS, the first BlackBerry to have both. Very nice. No new devices from anyone in the Symbian world, but there's a host of new bits to fiddle with from Nokia, from new games in Engage, principally the superb Mile High Pinball, to Ovi Share getting geotagging support, to maps on Ovi being announced, to betas of their Nokia Music Store client and Nokia Communication Center. Plenty there. See the relevant URLs for details. Suffice it to say that Nokia has been keeping very busy. Rumour has it that Apple's 3G iPhone is due out very shortly. My bet's on early June, but who really knows? Watch this space for launch video and analysis from Matt, my iPhone expert. Oh yes, and Opera Mini 4.1 is now formally out, so make sure you get your smartphone bang up to date with this free browser. It's not often that I get to tear a product to absolute shreds. And I must right at the start both thank Clove Technology for sending over the review sample of this, the Asus M930, and also ask them to forgive me for being absolutely brutally honest about this device. A brief introduction first though, the M930 is a clamshell communicator along the lines of Nokia's well-known E90 communicator, but noticeably shorter and lighter. Running Windows Mobile 6, there's a traditional quarter VGA outer display and a 400 pixel wide inner one plus the communicator-style QWERTY keyboard. There's no GPS here, despite the £390 price, but there is Wi-Fi. Everything's all set then for the marketing pitch, and I quote, the M930's 2.6-inch ultra-wide screen makes the day-to-day -day content browsing, reading and writing of documents and messages that much easier on the eyes. Sounds good, doesn't it? Except that there's no way to do most of that. OK, you can read documents, the clear view suite is included here, but you certainly can't write them. You can't even make text notes for later copying and pasting because there's no notepad or notes utility either. A travesty for a top-end QWERTY equipped communicator. The day-to-day -day content browsing bit is also not really true as Pocket Internet Explorer makes a mess of all but the simplest day-to-day -day websites and is only really at home on the mobile web. There's a Java virtual machine, so you could install Opera Mini 4.1, which would do a much better job, but that's kind of cheating. Now, calling a 400 pixel, 2.6 inch display ultra wide screen? I don't think so. Look at the inch of wasted space on either side. This on the E90, Nokia E90 is what you call widescreen, 800 pixels. 800, count them and weep. And the E90 is only now about £70 more than the Asus M930, while arguably having two or three times the functionality. You'd think that these beefs would be enough for me to just call a halt to the review right here, but I'm sorry, there's more. Both screens wash out horribly in bright light. The internal function keys are recessed and hard to press. The main speaker volume and the headset volumes, even set to maximum, are so quiet as to be almost unusable. The camera is poor, even for a 2 megapixel unit, and the lens is positioned in exactly the right spot to help you rest your greasy middle finger when you're holding the device. The volume keys are positioned so that they're pressed inadvertently just about every time you open the M930. Just about the only software extra is a My Secrets utility, which has the worst interface of any application I've seen since 1980. Deleting URLs from the, the Internet Explorer address bar is extremely tiresome. And there's an OS bug that means key presses regularly get missed. Are there any upsides to buying the Asus M930? Well, it, it looks very pretty from all angles. It's stylish. Both D-pads are a joy to use and both keypad and the keyboard are very well built and work well. But the catalogue of other woes forbid me to recommend this at the moment. Most are, thankfully, fixable in firmware, 
Apparently, a Windows Mobile 6.1 update is heading the M930's way, and not a moment too soon. But there are other points to do with the hardware design that mean that even when you're updated, you're advised to play with one before you buy. The Asus M930. Now you wouldn't normally catch me doing a new device review just because a previously looked at smartphone had been released in a different colour scheme, but this one's a bit special. The original Nokia N82 was pronounced a triumph of style over usability, partly because of the titanium colour scheme, which meant that the key legends were just about invisible in most lighting conditions, and partly because of the overly styled D-pad and function key surface, with left and right in particular requiring a degree of fingernail in order to get working consistently. Fast forward about three months then, we have a jet black version that addresses both complaints. Firstly, and most importantly, the keypad and function key legends are all printed white on black and superbly legible, obviously, in all light conditions. Problem solved. Secondly, I have a strong feeling that the D-pad used in the N82 has been subtly altered, with the outer ring raised in height compared to the early silver N82s. Certainly, there's less of a problem in getting left and right on the black N82. The biggest criticisms remaining are the fiddly keypad, which turns out to be quite usable in the long term. You just have to get used to it. I had an N82 as my main device for a month recently, and the relatively dim and small 2.4 inch display. I have an informed hunch that the dim display is just a software setting in the firmware, and I'd recommend Nokia to tweak this, uh, this backlight brightness in the next firmware release. Talking of which, the N82 Black has the same great V20 firmware that was handed out recently for owners of the titanium version, so bang up to date with Flashlight 3, etc. For the full SP on the N82, see my original video review in Smartphone Show 50, but for now, I'd give the black N82 a thumbs up and urge anyone prizing robustness, uh, navigation quality and low light photography to give it serious consideration. As you probably know, most of the top S60 smartphones from Nokia now shoot VGA quality MP4 video at 30 frames a second. Very tasty. But actually editing this footage in a productive manner on a PC has proved well challenging. I think I'm on my fifth video editing suite now. And with this in mind, I'd been eyeing up an Apple Mac for ages. And with the intention of doing ambitious things with smartphone shot MP4 video files and perhaps doing fancy photo overlays, you know I love them, I sent out a plea to smartphone show Mac guru James Berland. How about shooting some VGA MP4 video on his N95 and then demoing the ease of applying a photo overlay? Here's his tutorial from the Mac side of the smartphone world. Oh yes, one more thing. James doesn't do things by halves. He shot the N95 clip underwater. Yeah. The very first thing I needed to do was to source my image, in this case a picture of an N95 I found on the internet. I copied it to the pasteboard or clipboard I go in preview, Apple preview, free program, new from clipboard. Then we have a new file based on what was in my clipboard. I then go to the selection tool and change it to instant alpha or instant transparency. I select the area that I want to turn into a transparent area and increase that to about 20% in this case. You can see it's showing a quick mask. And then press return and it's done my alpha. I then save the image, save as. And I call this N95 and it's TIFF file and it has an alpha as shown there. Save that. Then going to drag that image into my iPhoto library. Again a free tool provided with all Macintosh computers. I then go into iMovie 08, it comes free with all Macintosh computers. I've already set up a new project called Image Overlay and you can see the, the video that I want to use there. I then go down to the image selection palette, bring up iPhoto. You see the last imported is my N95 image which I simply drag over the top of my video. And there you can see I've over just over six seconds of image overlay. Let's demonstrate this. And there you can see the video being played through the transparent area of the image. Pretty simple, really. 
If you've been watching the smartphone show through 2007 and into 2008, you'll have been very used to seeing the word Symbian at the top of each page. They've been my main sponsor and thank you to them for all the support. However, I do need another sponsor or advertiser going forwards. As from show 61, I've got nobody. And so the show will probably stop and I'll go back to being a postman, which will be a shame. If your company can help in any way, advertise or maybe be a, a long term sponsor and take over branding of the show, as it were, then do please get in touch at slitchfield, that's S-L-I-T-C-H field, at gmail.com. Thank you very much.